Hello, it's Dr. Rhonda Johnson. Today is Friday, December 11th, 2020. And today I'm gonna to be talking about, are you ready for shutdown 2.0 or 3.0 or 4.0? We know that the coronavirus is just raging out of control. We know that the deaths are too high and the number of people that keep getting infected keep climbing every single day. I always ask myself, what would I do if I was a governor or a, a elected official and had to make these calls? What if the hospital leaders were telling me that in one or two weeks they wouldn't have any more beds, no ICU beds, no more ventilators, not enough staffing to treat all these critically ill people, inadequate supplies of personal protective equipment? And if my neighboring states were in the same boat that my state was in, what would I do? What would you do? I think we have to admit that these are tough decisions and the basic function of government is to protect its citizens. It certainly seems that all other measures seem to be failing and COVID-19 is killing more people than any modern event that we can think of in recent history. I know that these decisions seem drastic to many, and I'm certainly glad that it's not my decision that I have to make. So my purpose in doing this message is about preparing ourselves for shutdown 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, or ever how many shutdowns it takes until we have enough immunity from the vaccine to eliminate this uh, pandemic. One California elected official said it best, if you're not staying ahead of this virus, you're falling far behind very quickly. So folks, we have to prepare ourselves again for this isolation and strict uh, social distancing because the lives that we save just might be our own or someone that we love. And this will help keep our health hospitals open uh, and prevent them from becoming overwhelmed with critically ill COVID patients. So how are we going to manage? Well, I have just a few thoughts that people have shared with me and you probably have some better suggestions. Please feel free to leave a comment. So number one, I think is plan to manage boredom, especially if you have a lot of young people in your household. I know we're all tired of FaceTime, Zoom, uh, phone calls, we want to gather and we have Christmas and New Year's coming up. And those are typical opportunities where we socialize. So we're gonna to have to be creative. And I say, what have you tried? What can you think of that you haven't tried before? Another suggestion is, I heard from someone, is trying socially distance family trips, short trips, day trips, where they pack a meal, pack some extra clothing, drive somewhere close enough where they can be in nature and minimize the need for public restroom stops. Some people just drive around their own city and go to visit different neighborhoods that they haven't seen before. And with the holiday season here, some people have told me how they drive around different neighborhoods looking at the holiday displays and the lights. Other people told me about a drive-by parade where they visit the relatives, they have them come out on the porch, they stay in their car, get out on the curb. Hey folks, it's 2020, we gotta do what we gotta do, right? Another opportunity is to educate yourself. Read those books, join a book club, listen to TED Talks, subscribe to new podcasts, and to educate yourself during the shutdown period. Other folks are investing in new streaming services, Netflix, Jill, Disney Plus, and hey, it's, it's opportunity to watch some movies that you haven't seen. Another suggestion is to indulge a little bit more in social media. Read some blogs, um, watch YouTube videos, TikTok videos, even if you've never been on social media before. Other folks are getting into self-improvement. Those do-it-yourself projects that people have never had time to do. I heard some people say they're taking makeup classes, exercise classes virtually. Other people learning new arts and crafts and hobbies and 
woodworking. You're only limited by your imagination. And then other folks are strengthening their faith, joining Bible studies or study religious study groups virtually, mixing it up by gender and age, and having contests and quizzes. And then other people I know are involved in virtual cooking classes, uh, baking lessons, uh, virtual game nights, virtual story nights, virtual paint nights. Again, we're only limited by our imagination. And lastly, I wanna say, get outdoors. Enjoy this cool weather. Fresh air is a essential. So if you have recovered from COVID-19, one more opportunity might be to donate your blood plasma to help save others. Contact your local plasma bank or blood bank and learn what you need to do. My take home message is that even if we find ourselves in shutdown 2.0 or 3.0 or 4.0, good things can come out of it. Anything is possible, folks, if we put our minds to it. Find out what works for you. Focus on the positive. Look out for opportunities to grow, learn, and acquire new skills. And please help others during this pandemic. Many people are suffering. You know, it doesn't take much to put a smile on somebody's face. Pick your cause and support it. There's an expression that small acts multiplied over and over can make a big difference. This is Dr. Rhonda Johnson. My views are my own. My only intention is to help save lives and help us get through this pandemic. Our mental health is just as important as our physical health. So we got to take care of it. Stay safe, stay connected, and have a blessed day.